In this episode, we're going to talk about the Third International, the Communist International founded in March 1919 by Lenin and Trotsky. The Third International was founded under the impulse of the October Revolution, 1917. In the midst of the Civil War, several socialist parties met in Moscow for the first founding congress of the New International. It had a declared aim to bring about a world socialist revolution. For the Bolshevik Party, the Russian Revolution was only a first step and a lever to develop and advance the socialist revolution throughout the world. But it was the victory of the Russian Revolution that allowed Lenin and Trotsky to make that first attempt to build an international revolutionary leadership, a general staff for the World Socialist Revolution. But where did the idea of building the new international come from? And what were the basis for its constitution? The Third International was born out of the breakup of the Second International, also known as the Socialist International. The Socialist International had been founded in 1889 and had grown enormously in the so-called peaceful period of the development of imperialist capitalism before the First World War. The growth of the second took place in a period of great struggles for reforms, such as wages, eight-hour working day, but also of trade union building and the electoral and parliamentary growth of the National Socialist Parties. Contradictorily, this growth of the European Socialist Parties led to the formation of a privileged layer of bureaucrats, made up of deputies and trade union leaders. They abandoned the struggle for socialist revolution and began to believe in the possibility of reforming the capitalist system. When the First World War broke out in 1914, the national leadership of these socialist parties supported the bourgeoisies of their respective countries. This was a clear violation of the principle of never supporting an imperialist war. It was a tremendous betrayal, which resulted in the dissolution of the Second International. Nevertheless, a revolutionary left wing had been formed within the Second International, including the leaders of the German Social Democratic Party, such as Rosa Luxemburg and Karl Liebknecht, as well as Lenin and Trotsky. This left wing fought for years against this bureaucratic and reformist trend within the Second International and in 1914 took a clear stand against the war and against the betrayal of the social democratic leaders. It was Lenin who first declared that the Second International was dead for the working class and that a new international had to be formed. It was not by chance that the Bolshevik party led by Lenin was the most advanced expression of this revolutionary left. It was a revolutionary fighting party, formed under the harsh conditions of repression of the Tsar's dictatorship. At the same time, it was a party that already had revolutionary experience from the revolution of 1905. The Bolshevik seizure of power in October 1917 consolidated and facilitated the task of building such an international revolutionary leadership. The Communist International was founded after the First World War, at the height of the revolutionary process throughout Europe, with revolutions in Germany, Hungary, Italy and other countries. It was not an easy road. The betrayal of social democracy took its toll and reached the ranks of the Third International. In January 1919, barely two months before the founding Congress of the Third International, Rosa Luxemburg and Karl Liebknecht were assassinated. 
They were killed by right-wing paramilitary groups under the command of the social democratic rulers. In the opening speech of the founding Congress of the Third International, Lenin paid tribute to the two great revolutionaries, calling on all present to pay tribute to Karl Leibniz and Rosa Luxemburg as the greatest representatives of the Third International. At its first four congresses, which were annual, the Third International defined the outlines of a revolutionary program and the organization of the communist parties. At the first congress, in its platform and statutes, the Third International defined as its objective the seizure of power by the proletariat in all countries, the constitution of governments based on workers' councils, that is Soviets, and the socialization of the economy as a basis for a transition to socialism. The second congress passed the 21 terms for the admission of the socialist parties to the Third International. These conditions define the type of party consisting exclusively of revolutionaries and organized on the principles of democratic centralism. In other words, the model and principles of the Bolshevik party were extended to the parties of the other countries. At these first two congresses, and also at the third and fourth congresses, important programmatic resolutions were passed. Among these resolutions was a program of struggle against the oppression of women and a program for the struggle of the oppressed peoples. Besides that, were also passed resolutions of the Workers' United Front on the participation of the communists in the bourgeois elections, on the intervention into trade unions and various other issues. All these resolutions are still today a reference for the tactical and strategic problems of the socialist revolution and are part of its programme. But unfortunately, this experience of the Third International was short-lived, barely the four years of the First Congresses. What happened in the end? The European bourgeoisie, with the decisive help of social democratic leaderships, managed to reverse the revolutionary wave of the post-war period. The retreat of the world revolution led to the isolation of the Soviet Union on the international scene. This isolation, combined with other factors, such as the exhaustion of the proletariat, which had fought tremendously in the civil war, and the destruction of the country itself led to the bureaucratization of the Soviet state and of the Bolshevik party. As the Third International was closely linked with the destinies of the Soviet Union and the Russian party itself, this also led to the degeneration of the Communist International. But the most important thing is that the foundation and the first years of the Third International went down in history. It was the most important attempt to build an international revolutionary leadership, a world party, to lead the socialist revolution. The Third International left an enormous legacy of lessons for the new generations of revolutionaries, a programmatic, theoretical and organisational legacy for the revolutionaries of the whole world, which is synthesised in the volumes with the resolutions and documents of the first four congresses. Lenin was undoubtedly an inspirer and undisputed leader of the Third International. But after him, Trotsky played a fundamental role, both in the speeches and in, in the drafting of the resolutions, documents and reports on the international situation of those first four congresses. And after Lenin's death, as we will see in the next episodes of this series, Trotsky was the best defender of that revolutionary legacy. One of Trotsky's most important concerns during the early years of the Soviet regime was the problems of everyday life. Trotsky said that man does not live by politics alone, and he wrote several texts on these problems of everyday life and cultural problems. And that is what we will see in the next episodes.